Hello everyone. Thanks again for choosing my scripts. Uh, I will explain in this movie how my script does work. But uh, first of all, let me explain you qu quickly uh, how I got the idea to create such a script. Uh, first of all, I found a lot of, you know, uh, some people that really work with Max script, they don't have problem to randomize stuff within 3ds Max, but for those doesn't for those don't work with 3ds with Max script, sorry, they have some difficulties for that. So many people have thought about it and create some scripts that you can, that you may find in, in internet that allows you to randomize stuff. But the problem was they are always for specific kind of objects or specific modifier. So they are not really flexible to randomize stuff in that. So from that, I got the idea to create something that will deserve to be called the ultimate randomizer. Now, actually, my script, I can say that it randomized almost everything within 3ds Max, uh, starting by the main properties of any object, going to modifiers and also the uh, translate or let's say the transformation controllers even different controllers path constraint uh, noise position or, or so on so we're gonna see that after so let me ex explain you first of all about the interface so you can find here about me some information for those who want to email me or something then we have uh, this rollout here we have, uh, first of all, main properties in common. So whenever you create an object, you can see that it properties, it main properties appears here. Those that can be randomized. Anything that has float or integer or point three or even Boolean value can be randomized. So such as radius, segments, slice, and so on. In the second part here, we can find the modifier's properties. So if I add a, proper, a modifier, any pro modifier to my object, you can see that I have here band listed here. And whenever I click on band, I got its properties displayed here. Uh, and uh, why there is a list here? Because one object can have more than one modifier. So let's add another modifier, for example, let's say twist. So you can see that I have twist and band both on the list. Whenever I click, it changes me. It changes me the properties here. The third part is the transform property. I can act on a position, rotation, or even scale, and doesn't it doesn't matter which which controller you are using. For example, for the moment, I have a position x, y, and z. So it is here. I have its properties. If let's for example change the control into something else, let's say for example path constraint you can see that uh, here it updated it and I can now act on the path constraint I have here small uh, small t edit text or small display text it displays me uh, the, the selected property whenever it's you can see here it's small area so there is some some properties that goes further here so whenever I select it it displays me it here and the last rollout here which is dynamic it change uh, depending on what you select so whenever you select for example float value like a radius or something it brings me here the float randomizer when I select segment segment it cannot be float but integer so it displays me the the integer randomizer and so on. Slice, for example, it's a Boolean part. Okay, so let's see how it does work. So let's bring a new object since I changed some stuff on it. So let's work on the radius. For example, I want a random value between 10 and 100. Whenever I click on new set, it gives me a random radius between these two values. Uh, some good things to know about my script is that it acts on many objects at the same time. So for example if you have multi-selected object you can as well randomize its properties as I said before. So you can see that well it's a big value here let's do something smaller 30 and that's it. 
you can see whenever I click it changes. Uh, a good stuff as well it's the same value and really relative checkable here when I say same value you will notice that indeed it gives me a random value but to the uh, the same value to, the, to all objects but when it's not checked it gives me individually a value for each object separately when I click on relative so let's bring them to the same value let's say for example between 20 and 30 it's still bigger let's say 520 we remove the same value or let's just keep it okay so when I click on a relative what it does actually when we have a relative not checkable it will give me exactly this value to the radius or to the property selected but when I click on relative it keep the main value and it increment it and add to it the the randomized value so if I say for example now between 2 and let's say 7 and I check relative now you can see that the objects are changing depending on this value by keeping the own and the original value it's really useful when you use to use this script you can see that it's a useful option uh, one good thing about this script as well is that you can act on multi object and different kind of, of objects at the same time so for example when I when I select for example a sphere you can see that it displays me its properties here whenever I add another selection from another kind you can see that I have some properties how it's possible it's that the script keep only the properties in common between these two objects so for example if I will look for the radius I will find it here why because both of the cylinder and the sphere have a radius value so I can randomize them again but if I choose for example if I look here for the height I will not find it why even if the cylinder have the height value but the sphere hasn't so that's why it's not displayed but if I select the cylinder and the box you can see that it have the height here indeed and now I can randomize this value on them and as I said before it acts on different on uh, multi selection selection object height 10 and 100 and that's it okay uh, just note guys that this script will does not work with Indo option so I advise you to before using this script when you are when you will work on something really heavy just say edit hold in case of you want to back to bring back to your to your uh, original file okay let's go ahead let's keep only these three objects and as you can as you would expect that if I select only the sphere and the box you can see that they have only two parameters in common between them because these two objects are too different from each other okay so let's do an example of modifiers okay let's add a band modifier and let's give some segments on the height so we can see the effect of the band okay go to 10 copies I select everything and I go now to the modifier modifiers part and I, you can see I have different uh, different properties there let's create some space between them to see the effects anyway we don't need to select everything okay so go to band band angle if I say for example minus 90 to 90 you can see that it's acting well okay uh, that is a good point about it you can use it as well you can use this script to uh, give a, a value to multi objects at the same time for example if I have this object and I want to give them the same value of the band angle I don't need it I don't need to do it one by one if uh, 
But if I, for example, write the same value, both in minimum and maximum case, you can see that they will always have the, the same value because the random, the random value between 90 and 90, it's 90 all the time. So it's pretty interesting to use it from t time to time to affect a value to a multi-selection uh, multi selection object. So now let's go, for example, to the bend, ang uh, bend direction. And let's say minus 100, one, 180 and one, uh, 180. So you can see that it changed the direction. You know what is the direction here. OK. Uh, indeed, you can animate using my script. So let's go to the band band angle and uh, from the zero let's create a new state minus 90 90 and go further the timeline activate the auto keys and set new values and you can see that I quickly animate an object multi objects randomly and it's really useful to create some, for example, uh, forks, movements, or grass, or, you know, it's up to you to see where you can use it. Okay, uh, let's do in, uh, more examples. Let's go, I forgot to do it, to do something. Let's add another modifier that you will notice that I can use different modifiers in the same objects, and it's not a problem at all so we have twist and band let's create copies just five we don't need a lot of number and let's go to twist now we go to angle and let's say minus 90 90 okay and at the same time I can act on the band modifier as we did before Okay, uh, let's go to the last part, which is the translate position. As you can see, and as you would expect, I will randomize the Z value, for example, from 0 to 100. And you can see that each object is a part, even if I, I change let's change the position controller let's go to the path constraint let's create simple shape make it smooth let's add more more points on it so we will have long path weld everything then make everything smooth Okay, change the color so it will be more visible. Okay, select now this object, go to its properties in the position, and we did already. So go here and add the, this path. Now you can see that I have an animation. Let's delete everything. And let's create a copy from this object. Let's say 40 copy. Then select them, and we can go to the path constraint, go to the percent, and you can see that we can randomize the objects, the position. Let's animate them. Sorry. Okay, you can see that indeed it's animated. Some of them are moving fast, it's because I just did it fast, so you can use it as your own. So what else? Before I forget something, I can't even pause the recording. I think that's it. In the next movie, we're going to see how to... I do some advanced example. I will maybe show you some of my projects where I use this script. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, please uh, send me an email at this email. Thanks for watching.